Mr. Giroux, in this lesson we are going to look at about six examples of doing integration of inverse trigonometric functions. Uh, five of those are going to be indefinite integration and one of those mixed in there is going to be a definite integral. Now, why are we doing so many examples? Of course, I'm always trying to give you like, you know, a lesson that will help you get through your entire uh, homework assignment. And thus, you'll notice all the time stamps usually on my videos at the bottom. Uh, so you can skip to the examples if uh, I'm doing one that's too easy or I'm taking too long to explain it. And, uh, you know, we have to do so many examples because we got to get our problem to exactly match one of these integration rules so we can apply it or and recognize uh, how all these integration rules that we're being given, there's a lot more to follow, uh, can help us to integrate those problems. And if you can't get an exact match, you're not going to be able to use them. So, and sometimes that's tricky. I'm going to start off by pointing out the six rules for finding derivatives of inverse trig functions so that you can see that when we're dealing with the cofunctions of sine and cosine, well, the derivative with respect to x of arc sine of u is u prime over the square root of 1 minus u squared. And when we do inverse cosine or arc cosine, it's the same rule except for a sign change in the numerator. And indeed, we see that's true with all of our three pairs of cofunctions, uh, that the derivative rules simply have a sign change between them. So when you're remembering your, uh, your rules for deriving inverse trig functions, you can really kind of just focus on three as long as you remember about that sign change for arc, the derivative with, for arc cosine, uh, the derivative for arc cotangent and arc cosecant. Well, that means that when we go in the opposite direction and we find, uh, in, when we do integration, that we can really just remember three of these because a simple sign change on this will give us arc sine. So we're going to just focus on the positive uh, rules, if you will, the ones without the negative signs, and say the indefinite integral uh, with, res with uh, you have this relationship here, this pattern that you're noticing, that you have the derivative of u over the square root of a minus u squared. Uh, well, that is going to be arc sine of u over a plus c. The de indefinite integral, or the integration of du over a squared plus u squared, so this inside function that's being squared, the derivative is in the numerator, is equal to 1 over a times arc tangent u over a plus c. And then we have our another derivative rule, or uh, excuse me, our integration rule uh, that will give us 1 over a arc secant of uh, absolute value of u over a plus c. Now I did do a video where we showed you where we derived where these derivative rules came from, and I drew reference triangles uh, for all of those uh, derivations. And I always had one side of that reference triangle being equal to 1. Well, we can adjust the size of that reference uh, triangle, and so, and we don't have to have a side which is actually equal to 1. So to make the pattern easier to recognize with these integration rules, we don't allow that, we don't have to just have that denominator of 1, like, uh, you know, if we're doing the arc sine of u, well, if you're putting something into an inverse trig function, that has to represent the sides of a triangle. So this would be sort of like your y over uh, r. Well, we don't have to have an r value in a reference triangle that's equal to 1. It can be any length, and so we have this a in here. And now, if, if this is something something other than one, uh, we can see that that comes into the denominator for uh, arc sine of u over a plus c, and it shows up in some other places for these inverse trig functions when we do uh, our integration. But like I said, we're not going to derive these formulas; we're just going to use them. So let's go ahead and get to that right now. Our first example. Uh, we want to find the integral of 20 over 1 plus 16x squared dx. Now, of course, from the video, we're going to go from easy to hard, and we have our three integration rules here. Our denominator does not have any radicals in it, so that means that we're pretty much going to probably be using uh, this integration rule and coming up with an answer of something dealing with arc tangent. So we have uh, let's see, pick a different colored chalk here. We have du over a squared plus u squared. So a is going to be a constant, and the u is our function, if you will. So we have an a value of 1. And if you wanted to get, you know, just walk through every single step, and it's like, okay, well, this first term is squared, so a squared is equal to 1, thus a is equal to 1. And our second term, if, if this, you know, does become an exact match, probably will, 
we have u squared. So, you know, we're looking at this should be a plus a squared plus u squared. So u squared is equal to 16x squared, thus u is equal to 4x, and du dx, or excuse me, uh, the derivative of u, or du, is equal to 4 dx. Excuse me. All right. So, well, let's see here. Uh, I've got a 20 dx, and after taking the derivative, basically, of u, uh, or writing du, we have 4 dx. We need this to be a 20 to get an exact match. So we're going to take this and multiply both sides by 5. Now I have enough information here to eliminate all references of u in this integration rule um, to see if I can get it to exactly match this integration rule, and so I can come out to the other side and get 1 over a arctan u over a plus c. And I do, I like to uh, do the u substitutions to get this to exactly match one of these rules. Uh, you can also do these integration, get, you know, notice the pattern in the integration that you have, expression that you have, and then apply the rule just to look a little bit different. Uh, but this is the way I like to do it. So, and I like to throw my chocolate over the place. We have the indefinite integral. Now we've got... This numerator is just simply du, right? So I've got a 20 dx and a 20 dx, and that's equal to 5 times du. So I'm going to bring that 5 out front, put my du on top, and we've got 1 squared plus, uh, or you can put the a. I guess if I'm trying to, I like, to, I don't know, I just always seem to have a habit of leaving the constants in there. You can write a squared if you want to like exactly match that, uh, that formula, and I just said I was going to do that. but. Uh, anyway, so over here we have parentheses, um, well, it should be 4x squared, right? So we're going to make that 5 times the indefinite integral of du. Let me go ahead and put that a back in there. a squared, even though I usually in my work leave the constant, plus 4x is my u squared. Well, now we have that exact match, and we can see that it's equal to 1 over a, or 5 times, because I have the 5 up front, 1 over a arctan u over a plus c. Okay, well, my a was 1, so it's going to be 5 times 1 is 5, times the arctan of my u, which was equal to 4x, over a, which is 1, yeah, I, I'm going to, with my other examples, I'm just going to leave the constant in there for the a, plus c. So this was actually a pretty straightforward example of uh, about as straightforward as these particular types of problems are going to get, where the problem we were given, really, I did a, probably more of the u substitution than I really did, needed to do for this problem uh, to get to the fact that the answer is 5 arctan of 4x plus c. Let's get to the next example. This next example isn't any harder than the first one. Uh, it is going to match one of these integration rules exactly, and we will uh, recognize very quickly, uh, as you see me reveal the answer, that we are going to match the integration rule for sine, arc sine, excuse me, uh, because we have uh, du on top and the square root of a squared minus u squared in the denominator, and it's already set up very nicely there. Our a is going to be 3, and our u is going to be x minus 4. Now, sometimes when you look at these problems that you're doing, you might sometimes think, oh, okay, well, this is going to be arc uh, secant when I get done uh, integrating. And then you realize your u substitution and getting it set up, maybe it's arc sine or, or even vice versa. But, uh, you know, when you see that radical in the denominator, there's a, a pretty good chance that you're going to be looking at either this rule or this rule and getting arc sine or arc cosecant. Uh, or excuse me, arc secant as your answer. So why am I bringing this up? Well, I want to just point out that here we have uh, an x minus 4 as our u. Well, that's a binomial being squared, and we have created these squared binomials since Algebra 1 when we were solving quadratic equations in geometry in Algebra 2, or certainly in pre-calculus if, we if we were graphing parabolas and hyperbolas and, and ellipses, you know, those conic sections where we had to put them into standard form. So that's kind of a hint as to what's coming up. Coming up, We may be seeing some denominators that have polynomials, some, some quadratics where we need to complete the square. So let me step out, show you the a and the u substitution, and finish this one up, because it's going to be very similar to the previous example.
Bam. Ah, uh, here we go. The indefinite integral of 8 over x times the square root of 5 minus the natural log of 2x squared squared dx. So, clearly, we are going to be using this rule here, uh, the integration rule for finding uh, uh, what, what, whose answer is going to be um, 1 over a arc secant of absolute value of u over a plus c. Because, I mean, we have a, some sort of thing on the top that looks like it must be a derivative of something, uh, and we've got an x out front, which is, you know, not a constant, so that could be our u. But, um, hmm. Well, then inside here with this radical, we have a u squared minus a squared. Well, the a is a constant, and, uh, well, our constant's in front of the minus sign. So I'm not sure if that is, if that is a rule that we're going to end up uh, having to use. So let's, let's see what happens. Let's start doing some substitutions in here, uh, identifying a and u and all that stuff. Well, this is a constant here, so we have a squared is equal to 5, and thus a is going to be equal to the square root of 5. And we already have something being, I forgot a parenthesis here, we already have something being squared, so it seems like we know what u is. It seems like that, that's u squared, so u is going to be equal to the natural log of 2x squared, and thus du, the, basically the, you know, finding the derivative of u with respect to x, is going to be, well, the natural log, okay, so the natural log of x is 1 over x, the natural log of u is u prime over u, or, well, I've already got a u, so I may have to say, uh, you know, w prime over w. So, at any rate, the derivative of the natural log of 2x squared is going to be, and well, that for that natural log, the inside function, its inside function is 2x squared, so the derivative of that is 4x over the inside function, which is 2x squared dx. Okay, so 4 divided by 2 is 2, and x over x squared is x, so this simplifies to be 2 over x dx. Well, that clears things up, doesn't it? <clears throat> we have a square root with a uh, constant in the beginning minus some kind of u function. And then out here we have an x. Well, du is 2 over x that we have in the denominator. Okay, dx. So I kind of you know, thought maybe we would be doing some kind of integration rule that gives us uh, arc secant something as an answer. But actually, we're going back to arc sine. So this is the integration rule that we're matching. Uh, let's see here. We've got, oh, well, we don't have an exact match yet. This is 2 dx, and this is 8 dx. So let me take this and multiply both sides by 4. All right, so we have 8 over x dx. 8 over x dx is 4 times du. I'm going to bring that 4 out front over the square root of 5, well, I want, you know, I do want uh, a squared to be there, so we're going to have 5. I'm going to wrap it in parentheses and have the square root of 5 squared minus the natural log of 2x squared. The natural log of 2x squared we have defined as u. All right, so that means that we've got, well, let's see here, we have 4 times because that's out front, and we have arc sine. And it's arc sine of u over a. So I'm just going to, and I have that exact, you know, again, match that, that rule exactly. So let's just go ahead and write like that. We have u over our a value is square root of 5. Don't forget the plus c. And now let's get that u back, you know, let's uh, get that u back out of there and get the reference to x back in. And we have 4 arc sine. Our u value is the natural log of 2x squared all over the square root of 5 plus c. And making sure there's nothing like we didn't forget an absolute value or anything. That is it. And that is our final answer for this example. Next! 
This example, we're actually going to work out twice. The first time I'm going to talk through it, uh, pretty much, you know, kind of like the first way I looked at the problem. And then I'm going to show you that, you know, the U substitution that you come up with doesn't necessarily have to be the only one. So we're going to take a second look at this problem, but I'm just going to kind of reveal that second solution to you to get the video moving, because I know I'm going to be doing a lot of examples and thus be rather long. Okay, at any rate, we got uh, some kind of what probably is a derivative of something from the denominator here, and we have something times a, a, a radical again, and we have something times a radical again, and that something's not just a constant, so it looks like we might, again, have a possibility of get, having an integration rule that's going to give us an arc secant answer. Uh, well, that may still be the case, but I see a function minus a constant, and here I see a constant minus a function, and I have a constant first, so I'm not sure which one of these rules I'm going to would exactly match. So let's say here, how about, well, if you look down here and you think I'm going to match this rule for arc secant, uh, which gives, I don't, well, what am I going to call this, right? So I keep referring to the answer. Uh, so let's just say that u is equal to the square root of um, 2x. Well, then inside this radical, we have a u squared. So that means that u squared is going to be equal to 2x. When I square both sides, it's going to, get, it's going to eliminate the radical. And that means that du for this, now this is 2x to the 1 half power. So if you apply the power rule, and actually really need to do the chain rule, right? So bring that power of 1 half down. And then we have 2x to the negative 1 half power. And then we're going to multiply by the derivative of the inside function, which is going to be 2. And then, of course, we have to remember the dx. Well, the 2 and the square root and the denominator of 2, those are going to cancel out. And so we end up with du is equal to, um, well, basically 2x to the negative 1 half power dx, and that is going to give us, um, well, it's going to give us du is equal to uh, 1 over the square root of 2x dx. Hmm. Seems like we have a bit of an issue here, right? Because I said that I wanted the u to be the square root of 2x, and now we have this square root of 2x in the denominator showing up with my dx. Well, okay, I can take this and I can multiply both sides by 3 and we get 3 du is equal to 3 over the square root of 2x uh, dx. <clears throat> and I actually have enough information up here to eliminate all my references of x in my problem and go into u. And of course, our a value is going to be 1. So 3 dx, or 3 over square root of 2x dx, 3 over square root of 2x dx is going to be 3 times du. I'm going to pull that 3 out front, as I usually do. And that's going to give us uh, just simply du over, um, well, that square root of 2x, remember, in the denominator went out with that substitution. So now we just have the square root of 1 squared minus, well, let's see here, the 8x. Hmm. Well, I have 2x is u squared, so I can write that as uh, 4 times 2x. That's, that's 8x, right? And that means that we have 3 times the indefinite integral of du over the square root of 1 squared minus 4, and that 2x is u squared, okay? I'm actually kind of getting myself into another problem here. Uh, let me, whereas I sort of like I'm trying to do a u substitution, but yet I don't just simply have a u, but I do, I can write this as 3 times the indefinite integral of du over the square root of 1 squared minus 2u squared. It's almost like I need to do another substitution and call it like a W substitution or something like that. But instead of just trying to make this look exactly like one of these rules, let's do something I don't normally do and sort of recognize the pattern. We have an indefinite integral, 
we have a square root of a constant minus uh, a function squared. That's sort of like that a squared minus u squared. And the numerator, you know, if this is u, if that inside function, that, that thing inside the power of 2 is u, then the, the numerator has to be the derivative of u. Well, my inside function here is 2u. So the derivative of that would be, you know, I need a 2, right? So I need to have the derivative of 2u would be 2 du, but I only have 1 du. So I need to bring up a 2 in here, and if I'm going to multiply a 2 under the numerator, then I need to divide a 2 out in, the, in front of the integral, and so we have 3 over 2. Okay, so let's show this again. We have this u, and then we have the sort of the derivative of that u. All right. So, that means that we've got 3 over 2, and now we've got this, this integral rule here that we're using, arc sine of my u, well that's actually 2u, right, over a, which is just 1, I'll get rid of that in a second, plus c. So that base that has the power of 2 on it is my numerator. That base with the power of 2 on it is my numerator, and that, and that uh, numerator of the overall rule was the derivative of that. So the derivative of u, uh, 2u, is going to be 2du. Okay, well my u was the square root of 2x, so that means that my final answer is going to be 3 over 2 arc sine of 2 times the square root of 2x. Uh, oh, it was over 1, so I don't need to leave room for a. Plus c. Okay, that was a, that was a kind of a tough one. Um, but is that the only way that you have to think your way through the problem? No, it's not. So um, let's get out of here. Let's do a different substitution for u. Uh, that substitution specifically is going to be letting u equal, and now if this was u squared, then u is going to be the square root of 8x. Let's see what that looks like. I wanted just to attempt to make sure that you're okay with me saying, well, if that base is 2u, then I need to have this to be t d u in the numerator, and then show that, that balancing out of the, of the division of 2 out front. If I had done like a w substitution, like I kind of verbally said, then w would have been 2u, and dw would be 2du. Well, if that's a w and that's dw, or the derivative, you know, w prime, then that's my 2 and my 2 du. Okay, so that, that's okay that I did add that there just in case you were wondering. All right, let's get to that other u substitution and see another alternative way of doing the problem. Of course, I'm trying to show every step, so I make this as clear as possible. Uh, so I've got a lot more work here in my u substitution, and, but ultimately my work inside the problem is a lot simpler by uh, allowing u to be the square root of uh, 8x, or noticing that that 8x would be my u squared. And we got u is equal to 2 squared of 2x. Uh, found my du and ended up, after cleaning it up, I got du is equal to 2 over the square root of 2x dx. But my numerator had a 3. Well, if I bump that out front, my numerator is 1. So I divide both sides by 2, or, yeah, and I get 1 half du is equal to 1 over square root of 2x dx. So when you saw that square root of 2x uh, in the denominator disappear, hope you realize that was uh, from this substitution there. Okay, so that's the end of this problem. I don't know why I'm pausing. Uh, the next example is going to require some completing the square to get the denominator set up for us to apply one of these rules.
back in a second. The indefinite integral of 2x over x squared plus 8x plus 20 dx. Now every time we see a ratio it does not mean, of course, that we are doing uh, are going to use an integration rule for inverse trig functions. Indeed, we've done plenty of these before, and I see that the numerator has a degree that is one less than the denominator. So it would seem like you know maybe the numerator uh, is closely set up to just simply be the derivative of the denominator. Thus, uh, then our u is going to be. Let's do it in our color for this. Our u is going to be equal to x squared plus 8x plus 20, and our du then is going to be equal to 2x. Well, that's good, because we have a 2x there. Um, oh, well, plus 8 d, not du, dx. Well, I got the 2x, but I don't have the plus 8. So, what we're going to do is, we're going to make that happen. So I'm going to come over here, and I'm going to write the indefinite integral of 2x plus 8. Boom! There's the 8. I needed an 8. There's an 8. Now the numerator is going to be uh, a derivative of the denominator. And so we have du over u, or u prime over u, and that sounds like an integration rule for natural log. x squared plus 8x plus 20 dx. Right? That's it. Let's uh, get done. Write the final answer. Uh, I didn't leave the whole board empty for no reason. And of course, we can't just add an 8 in and pff, like change the value of the, the fraction. No, we have to balance it out. So if we add 8, we have to subtract 8. Okay, well now we're going to focus on this portion of the numerator, which is, you know, basically if the denominator is my u, then my 2x plus 8, it is a u prime, but now I have a minus 8. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to separate this integral into two separate parts. And that's going to be the indefinite integral of 2x plus 8 over x squared plus 8x plus 20 minus the indefinite integral of 8 over x squared plus 8x plus 20. And I just remembered my dx's. Let's add those back in. Okay, well, I adjusted the problem by, uh, by the fact that I wanted, uh, for that first integral here, I wanted the numerator to be a denominator, or a, a, a derivative of the denominator. So I do have a u prime over u here. So, I already know the answer to my first part. This is going to be the natural log of x squared plus 8x plus 20. Okay, now I have a decent amount of work left to do, so before I go on and realize I said something silly. Yes, okay. Uh, let's carry on. And actually, now that I'm looking at my notes, we're going to go ahead and take that 8 and pull it out front as well. Um, I think we'll just go ahead and do that now. Okay. Well, what was it, like the second example when I, when I pointed out the fact that, um, that we had a squared binomial in the denominator? Well, that meant that we had, you know, I said that at some point we were going to be getting quadratics in our denominator where we were going to have to complete the square to get it into that sort of where there's a constant squared and an a and a u squared, some kind of function squared. So I'm going to just sort of pick this up a little bit by coming out and uh, letting... Well, you can watch the completing the square process or pause the video. Make sure you remember how to do it. Okay, well, bam! But... <laughs> I found uh, my, the indefinite integral of one of my terms and forgot to add the constant. And I wrote c sub 1 because I knew that, uh, of course, we have two indefinite integrals and we'll have a constant from each one of those. Uh, don't enter a sea of desperation by forgetting your constant, your addition of the constant when you do your indefinite integration. Uh, so, over here, let's see. 
Uh, in completing the square, the purpose of completing the square, of course, is so that we can set up a perfect square trinomial. And when I took half of that b and I squared it and added it, I got a positive 16, but I had to subtract the 16 to balance that out. Square root of x squared is x, square root of 16 is 4. My middle term is positive, so thus it's x plus 4 squared. I just came up with another letter for my substitution and said let w equal uh, x plus 4 and dw is 1 dx, which I already had set up. And thus, I have negative 8 or minus 8 times the indefinite integral of 1 over w squared plus uh, 2 squared, which is my uh, integration rule that leads to arctan. So it's negative 8 times 1 over a, which was 2, arctan of w over a, or u over a, whatever letter you're using, plus c sub 2, because, well, I just found another indefinite integral. Well, my two unknown constants can simply combine to be a, 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 a one unknown constant, and we get our final answer. Our last example is going to be definite integration, and I don't have to worry about that plus C and forgetting about it. Bang! For our last example, it's actually going to ease back down on the difficulty level, be more like actually the first couple of examples, other than remembering how to do a definite integral. And I'm going to do this through a u substitution, thus I'm going to change my lower and upper limits through that, uh, that identification that I make of the u substitution. Now, I've had a number of examples where it looked like we were getting or given uh, a problem that would be able to match the integration rule that ends up giving us uh, 1 over a arc secant absolute value of u over a plus c. And they all, underneath the radical, had a constant minus some kind of function. Uh, squared. So here we do have a 25x squared, which we'll find a u substitution for that in a second, uh, and it's minus a constant being squared. So this one actually is going to follow this integration rule, and because we're easing back down on the difficulty level and just reminding you of how, we, of how to find the uh, a definite integral, uh, I'm going to just pause, step out and reveal the answer in small steps and finish up this video. Thanks for watching. Well, let's see here. We have our u substitution giving us u is equal to 5x, du is equal to 5dx, but only at a 1dx. And uh, my u, which I'm looking for here in front of my radical, was only x. So I'm missing a 5 in my numerator and denominator, so uh, 5 over 5 is equal to 1. So multiply the numerator by 5, the denominator by 5, and, and I'm making my fraction look different without changing its value. Finish all my substitutions. If you're going to keep your definite integral in terms of u, don't forget to, again, uh, use that rule right there to change your upper and lower limits, apply the integral, uh, and finish up your process. And our answer was approximately 1, uh, excuse me, approximately 0.139. I'm Mr. True. Go do your homework.